Hello and welcome back to the Knitting Pace podcast. This is episode 5 and today is Sunday the 22nd of October. I'm sorry if my glasses are flaring because this the weather just became really nice and I'm so blind without my glasses so that's just gonna be how it is today. But I have been receiving some very lovely feedback from some viewers and uh, yeah, I'm just really happy about it and it makes me smile all the time and I, I've noticed a few new subscribe subscribers and welcome to everyone, I'm so pleased to have you here. There's also been one introduction in the Ravelry group that I made which is called the knitting pace podcast and you are so welcome to go there and join and introduce yourself or come with any questions or suggestions for the podcast or anything like that um yes i also wanted to say sorry about the very abrupt ending in my last episode I was struggling with the lighting and uh, some technical issues and yes, but I think it was a good thing that I got uh, abrupted um, the last time because it was getting really long and I wasn't even done with the projects I had planned on talking about, so I've made a decision about the format of this podcast, which is learning by doing, but I think I'm going to focus on um, three projects for every episode. Um, And then if I have more to talk about, then I might record soon after that. Today I already have more than three projects, so if I have the energy, I might record episode 6 right after, but we'll see. I've decided to put show notes for everything I'm talking about in the YouTube description bar just underneath the video. That's so much easier because I can just copy paste if there's something I'm repeating and it's easier for you to find it, the things I'm talking about, and you don't have to pause the podcast to write something down that I'm mentioning or something like that. So I thought that would be easier for everyone and had quite a messy plan sketched out for me today. Um, one thing before I forget it, I have just a non, non-yarn related tip for notebooks which is, I'm just using a non-linear notebook and I've always had the trouble of not find, being able to find what I've been writing earlier and I just, I don't want to look through it all the time so I just kind of forget about it and the bullet journal movement if you can call it that which is just that you buy a blank notebook and then you fill out what you need in a notebook yourself I think it's very interesting it's a little bit intimidating but what I've gathered is that you can it doesn't have to be complicated you don't have to use several hours every month setting it up for the upcoming month So I just took one thing that I really liked about it, which is writing an index for the book. So on the first page, I have put uh, pages or numbers for, yeah, all the pages. And it's just been really easy finding things and going back to projects and This notebook is for knitting and the podcast primarily. And if I have any 
yarn related ideas. So that's just a really simple tip that I hadn't thought about myself. That was a little bit of a different topic. Today I have three things I would like to talk about. It is a sweater, the Buckley sweater that I was talking about in the ending of the last episode. The mittens that I didn't get around to mentioning and then a jacket I have been sewing for quite some time. I think it was done a month, month and a half ago. Now I can find it. This is why I have my index. I have a question for anyone who wants to answer. I have my favorite sweater, probably my most worn, uh, which is my improvised sweater, sweater um, from the guide by Karen Templer from French Association. And it has been starting to peel quite. Well, not a lot, but around the sleeves and uh, down the sides where your arms are sort of, you know. So what is your best tips for removing pill? I know there are several combs and rotating razor blades or something. And as I understand, pilling is, well, when I first heard about it, I thought that it was something that made the project weaker like some of the yarn went missing if you removed it but as i understand it now it's it's actually some uh, excess fiber just working their way out of the yarn so yeah my sh very short uh, question is just if anyone would like to share what they do to keep their knitting neat looking. Okay, back to the projects. I was talking about my Buckley sweater. Actually, I wanted to show you the picture, which I also forgot last time. It is, it's a sweater pattern by Bristol Ivy. And this is her in the sweater. And it has a panel down the center and the same panel down the back. And I am knitting it in the similar melange yarn organic wool and I think it's color 18 maybe I'll write it in the show notes and this is how far I've gotten so it does not look like the sweater at the moment this is yeah the front panel and the back and I haven't blocked it, but I steamed the front a little bit. I'm not following the pattern mm, exactly. Well, I am, but I did shorten it. Mm, so the, I think, the panels, I've shortened it by 10 centimeters. And now I'm supposed to pick up stitches around all around and then knit back and forth. And I think my gauge is slightly off. So my plan is to maybe knit a swatch in a smaller needle size. So far I've been using my new Hi Hi Sharps 3.25 millimeter. And I think I'm gonna knit a swatch with a three millimeter to see if my gauge is going to look more like Ivy's or Bristol's. And I've started actually picking up 
stitches and I just um, I just started doing it without really having a plan and I think it, I put it on waste yarn because I wanted to get an idea of if it was the right count. Looking at the pattern, I think I'm gonna need to start over and pick up stitches again. See, this is sort of a rough idea of what it is going to look like. Like this, I think. I'm going to do some math and you know, see how many stitches is picked up in the pattern and then I think calculating by percentage how many stitches I should be picking up now that I have a slightly uh, shorter length. I think I'm still very excited about this project. It's just when you like me sometimes do not follow the pattern then you have when you have to do some math to figure out the next step then sometimes the project doesn't come along as quickly as if you if you could just look at the pattern and do what it says i just wanted to mention this panel because this stitch is quite interesting i think it is looks a little bit like a cable but it is not and in the pattern she just calls it lt and rt and i don't know what it what it's short for but i just think it's a really neat way to get an effect that is a little bit like a cable but it's just very a different way to yeah, to get some sort of 3D effect in your knitting. I think this is going to be one of my favorite sweaters once it's done, but I'm also very patient with it because I know I have to figure out some of the stuff myself, especially if my gauge is not going to be on spot. So we'll see and I'll keep you updated. This is the yarn. And there's something um, a little bit weird about this yarn because it doesn't smell at all. So it's it's just a little weird. So if you don't like that, then this is definitely uh, a nice yarn to work with, smell wise. Um, yeah, my second project from episode four that I didn't get to talk about or the one that I didn't mention at all was a pair of mittens and since then I finished them so this is a finished object and they haven't been washed so there's quite a few ends uh, you can see the insides if you want to this is version 2 of a mm, pair of mittens of my own design you could say or just without a pattern and i can't find the second one the second mitten of version one but that's okay i only need one to show you this is the first version and this is the second. And I changed almost everything. If you've noticed, the thumbs are a little different intentionally. Okay, so I changed the needle size from two and a half to 2.25, and I changed the length of the mitten because when you 
put this on. I started the gusset for the thumb too late. Well, not too late, but it just gives a, um, like, I don't know. It, there's just a lot of extra fabric here that I didn't really want. And of course you can fold this up. But there's just so many things that I didn't like about this one. For instance, I didn't knit the thumb long enough, so there's like some fabric here that I... It's just a little uncomfortable <laughs> to wear. And then I decided I wanted to have some um, shorter stripes and you know to get more stripes in one mitten and then because i was changing everything else i also decided to go with a two by two rib because i rarely do that I, maybe it was my first time oh except for my payton's cardigan but then i also changed the cast on method this is just a regular long tail cast on i usually um, take both needles and wrap the cast on around because then you get then you can tighten it and then you get an equal or like a yeah the same stitch length in every stitch but and it doesn't get too tight but since then I've learned this is not stretchy it's just some long stitches since then I've learned some different cast ons and I wanted to do the tubular cast on for this one but after starting over two or three times I just I just realized that you don't really see the cast on because when you have a sweater on it's gonna stop here or a jacket and it just takes some extra time doing the tubular cast on and I didn't want to risk having to rip it out again and decided to go with a German twisted cast on I think it's called and it is it is stretchy um, it does give a little bit extra edge sort of um, Maybe compared to this one, you can see this one has more like like a stripe going this way, and this one has more like two. It looks a little bit like two rows of a cast on, but it's quick, and if you just want something a little bit elastic or something an elastic cast on then this is my go-to when I just want to get the project moving. The yarn is these three. I have four grams left of this one, 33, no, 34 grams of this one, and 22, maybe it was the other way around. I have 60 grams left, all in all. So I've all, it was used to be 50 grams gain, and I've made five, no, four mittens now. And that the sun is really coming out. I apologize if it's too bright. I can see my, oh, my glasses are blurring a little bit. Yes, I need curtains. Okay, the yarn is from the Danish yarn dyers. Uh, Gull, and I've talked about them before. I managed to find two of the ball bands, and it is plant dyed, all of their yarn. And I thought it was interesting to see because they have these boxes that they can tick off. So the one of them is. Uh, dyed with fern, which is fine in Danish, and indigo, so I'm guessing this is the blue one. 
and then the other one is dyed with walnut and couple which i have not been able to translate but couple gives it um more like a red color apparently it can color red in very different nuances or shades or whatever you call it mm, this smells very nice but it is um let's see i think the yarn is a little funny to work with it is a merino wool let's see uh, oh it's super wash i didn't know hmm. but it is a 80 percent merino 20 percent nylon 50 gram skein then it is 210 meters and somehow when you when you're knitting with it it does feel a little bit like cotton not really but just a little bit and i think it's it's just weird because then when you have the finished object it's really nice and soft i haven't washed it yet like i said so and i haven't washed the version one either so i'm not sure if it's gonna change the the fabric or the softness but I just wondered a little bit. Maybe it's because it's super wash because I didn't realize that until now. These need to be washed and then I have a little bit of a plan for these three. I think they might become a baby romper for my friend's baby who is coming February, I think. I'm not sure. I would like to do some sort of color work. I think doing this color and then having this pop out like every five stitches would be really nice. But I just, I don't think I have enough. Then it has to be like a newborn size. So maybe I'll just stay away from color work, knitting a little bit longer. I haven't done, I've practiced a little bit with color work but I haven't done a project with it so far so oh yeah there was one thing I I'm all in all I'm really happy about all the changes I've made but there's one thing that I maybe regretted a little bit because there's something about knitting stripes in a small circumference that is a little bit tedious and at the same time fun because you do get this was my first striped project and you do get the oh just one more row so i can do one more stripe and get to the next color and but there's also a little bit more work to it than if you were just knitting with one color because you have to Pay attention to this is every five rows five rows is one stripe and then if you knit too far then you have to think back and nobody wants to do that and then you have to well i didn't like the jog you get if you just change the color and i do think i got a little bit of jog anyhow but I was trying to figure out how to avoid that and as I remember from knitting the first pair there was a tip about um, slipping the first stitch like so you change color and you knit one round and then when you get back to the color you just change to you slip the first stitch instead of knitting it and well, up here it's definitely neater, but yeah, so there's quite a few things you have to pay attention to. Okay, so the thing I actually wanted to mention was this, um, the thumb, I just maybe should have decreased because I just took the yarn in all, I think, 21 stitches 
twice and then pulled and wove in the end. And this was a problem in the first ones because I don't think I secured it properly. So you got a like, little hole there. <laughs> so it's better in this one, but I definitely should have um, decreased before. I know that for next time. Oh, I just also wanted to mention I was watching Taylor's Wool Needles Hands podcast and she was talking about one by one rip and that it looks a little bit more homemade usually when doing that compared to the two by two. And I just have a little bit of a tip if you if you actually like the one by one rib but wants to make it look more neat then you can the problem is when you knit and purl then I think the next knit stitch is gonna look a little bit wonky so I just I haven't done it in this one actually but I've started to in ribbing or every time I switch from knit to purl in the first purl I I just give the yarn a little bit of a tuck so you get a much neater look but it doesn't work that well with the pattern or if you need to meet gauge then your gauge is going to be very different from the what the pattern says probably but for socks and mitten and the like then I think it's nice to to get like a tight ribbing. I actually did do a swatch. This is for a different project that I'm gonna talk about next time. But and this is my swatch, which is not that pretty. I'm gonna talk about that also. But down here, I've done the pulling every pearl stitch, and up here. It's just a regular intuitive ribbing. So it does make quite a difference. And yeah, let's see. My last project for this episode is a sewing finished object, and it is the Sapporo, is that right? Yeah, Sapporo coat by Paper Cut Patterns. And here it is. I I have some photos on my Instagram, knitting paste DK, if you're interested. But this is what it looks like. I made the smallest size, and it's not small. I think. There are three sizes and I've had a crush on this, it's called champagne color for a while, but it's not good for my skin tone. So I figured I could just put it inside my coat. And then I found some cheaper wool in Stuff of Steel which is a Danish fabric store. It also has sewing machines and a little bit of yarn. Anyway, this is my autumn jacket or coat. And it is so nice. I don't think I've ever had this cozy, a coat before. I recently put in the button because it is it was fine just in the beginning of autumn um, but now it's cold so yeah the only problem is when I close the button then it sort of pulls a little bit so I don't know Maybe it needs a little bit of a, a hook. 
I don't know if you can hear because my boyfriend is singing. So, yeah. There are a few things that I wanted to mention here. I wish I had made the pockets bigger because it does look like like you have big pockets like this but in reality it's more like this maybe like this huh. yeah this is the pocket so my phone i'm just always a little bit worried if it's gonna fall out and also i've noticed a lot of people have had some issues with the lining because you only have lining for the body and not for the sleeves and then you hand stitch the lining to the sleeves afterwards and a lot of people have mentioned and i had the problem too that it's hard to you fold the lining over and it's hard to make it reach further than the seam allowance of the wool that I've used. And so my favorite fabric store is called Mita Mita. And they recently sewed up two versions of this jacket. And it was also my worry that it was going to be a little bit too bulky here at the sleeves when it came down to it. I just wanted to get it done. So, but now I know what you can do different if you want to. And that is to only cut the, the sleeves are cut in four pieces and then sewn. So each sleeve is two pieces. So instead of four pieces, you only cut two and then you, for the lining, you just cut out as if you were making another coat so that the lining will will be like the inside here um i think i'm going to do that if i am going to make it again and it is so comfortable i have this backpack i wear every day it has like two clips in the front and then when it's a little bit heavy, the weight pulls down on the very thick wool. It's just so comfortable around the neck. So I'm very thrilled with this one. Oh, one more thing I would probably change also in this one is to sew in a little something where you can hang it on a hook because that gets a little bit annoying. At first I thought, well, oh, that's going to be fine. I can just put it on a hanger at home. And then I realized that you also need to take it off when you're outside or at school and then you can't hang it up. So I'm going to find a way to put in such a thing at some point. <sighs> yes, I think I'm going to call it a day and maybe record episode six. Thank you so much for watching and happy knitting and sewing or whatever you're watching on. See you next time.